Now, the Chandrayaan-3 lunar rover has begun exploring the moon's surface after India became the first country to land a craft near the largely unexplored South Pole. Chandrayaan-3 sent back these images of its six-wheeled solar-powered rover leaving the craft to conduct experiments for the next two weeks. The mission's success has sparked massive celebrations in India. It's only the fourth country to pull off a soft lunar landing and for the relatively low cost of around $75 million. India says its next plans are for a crewed mission to the moon. Dr. Namrata Goswami is an independent scholar of space policy and great power politics. She's a co-author of Scramble for the Skies, the great power competition to control the resources of uh, outer space. So welcome back to DW. Uh, this mission seems to be going very smoothly. Yes, it is, because uh, one thing that surprised, I think, most people is that how soon the rover was rolled out. And so that itself is a great feat. And as you mentioned, uh, it has already sent back images. So for me, when I'm watching it, the one thing that strikes me as critically important about this particular rover is that now India has a one-stop lunar technology. So it has the ability to launch it has the ability to enter lunar orbit, enter the right elliptical orbit, break and utilize its propulsion system correctly, land on the lunar surface uh, safely, which is extremely important, especially the South Pole, and then finally send out a rover to study the lunar surface. So uh, it is extremely significant from that particular technological feat to my mind. Right. And, and talk us through what this, this uh, rover is going to be doing for the next couple of weeks. Sure. So the rover is designed to survive a lunar day, which is 14 Earth days. So the lunar itself has two payloads. Uh, that has become active as per the Indian Space Research Organization's, uh, you know, the the tweet that they put out on X. And so uh, one of the experiment is extremely critical for future missions. So uh, one of the payload is going to study the lunar uh, surface for elements like aluminium, iron ore, titanium. And why is that important? It's because if you think about habitation that nations are looking to establish on the moon. For example, India is uh, partnering with the Artemis Accords. So that kind of resources can be utilized to manufacture and build on the moon itself. Right. The lunar rover is also uh, looking for water ice and to confirm it, and that means that it will be able to sustain those uh, missions that are uh, coming in the future. So uh, I think the critical significance of the rover is that it's going to give us a good map of uh, lunar regolith, which is soil, explain what the elements are, and then uh, offer the data for further missions that are going to come in the next few years. And India's next ambition is to send people uh, to the moon. Can that be the next step, or do you have to sort of practice first sending people into space? Yeah, so uh, interesting question. So India is uh, going to collaborate with the U.S. in terms of the Artemis Accord, and the Artemis Accord has ambitions to uh, send the next, uh, you know, uh, human, uh, the next woman and the first person of color to the moon, and India's joined that. India has a Gaganyaan mission, which is a human spaceflight mission. I think the first goal is to send humans to low Earth orbit. So uh, India is now collaborating with the United States to send a mission to the International Space Station next year. And so the next step will be the moon. So I think you'll have to first sustain in low Earth orbit and then look for uh, sending humans to the moon. That would be the next step. I would see that in the next, say, uh, by 2030 is what and, I would say. And how does that, how does the, the inclusion of, of living things on, on a mission like this, how does that multiply the difficulty? It is very difficult because, first of all, the lunar surface and the lunar atmosphere, it's the lunar, basically the moon doesn't have the capability to sustain, doesn't have oxygen. So, or or uh, it's got frozen water, but now you'll have to turn that water into habitation. You will also have to build a habitation module that can sustain human life. You'll have to build that entire end-to-end -end logistics system. So until the time you can build the technology to extract the resources on the moon, you'll have to build the capability to launch and, and supply 
human habitation there. And, and to also ensure that habitation can be sustained for a longer time. Till now, you had human beings go through the Apollo program, but they were never there for a long term and also not for resources or economic perspective. So the difficulties are extremely high. China is going in 2030 to the moon and setting up a research station by 2036. So you do have other countries interested in this as well, but not yet demonstrated. So it'll be an amazing feat if it can be demonstrated successfully. And we've, we've seen lots of uh, pictures of uh, Indian people being very happy that this has uh, happened successfully. Um, what have, I mean, are, are they too happy to, to ask the question what they're actually getting for the $75 million investment in uh, Chandrayaan-3? So I think uh, overall, uh, there is, of course, a sense of pride and happiness and the fact that this is the first time India has gone to a celestial body. But what is fascinating is that there are actually great debates and uh, scientific conversations about what this mission means, right? And so, first of all, the cost was a very critical factor. Second, India just took a decision this year to privatize its entire space manufacturing sector. So the path forward now is how does this particular mission that had about $75 million investment return investment that is tenfold? How do you actually privatize it to bring the cost down even further? And by that, what cap capacity can India actually build for establishing a completely cislunar communication ecosystem? So by that, I mean uh, communication, survival, uh, secure, safe missions, from low Earth orbit to the moon. So those questions are already being asked and nice. already being mapped out as we speak. Fascinating as ever, Dr. Gaswami. Uh, thank you so much for joining us again, Dr. Namrata Gaswami. Thank you so much for having me.